Hey, what is going on guys? It's Donovan here with Tech Boosted, and in today's video, I'm going to be bringing you guys a new series to this channel. So basically, every other week, I'm going to construct a PC part picker list on PCPartPicker.com and share it with you guys. So this is going to be a little bit different than most channels that do PC builds of the week or whatever, um, whereas I'm going to include an operating system as well as peripherals. So one week I may do a full on budget build and not include those, and then the next week I may do an entire gaming setup from desk to peripherals to PC components and whatnot. So this week I'm going to be doing a GTX 1060 budget build, so stay tuned for that and continue watching guys. Okay guys, let's start off with the Intel Core i5-6400. Now this is a quad-core processor clocked at 2.7 GHz and can turbo up to 3.3 GHz if needed. This new processor is packed with the new Skylake architecture so it can support up to 64 gigs of DDR4 memory. Now it has integrated graphics but we are also going to include a graphics card into this build. This 4-core processor is currently the cheapest Core i5 Skylake processor you guys can get on the market right now. So if you guys are looking to upgrade to the new Skylake architecture, this processor is ideal for you. The 4 cores also add addition in terms of multi-core processing as well as gaming. Okay guys, for the motherboard, we're going to be going with the Gigabyte GAH110MA Micro ATX LGA1151 motherboard. I have personally used this motherboard in a rig so I know that it will work just fine in terms of gaming. Not expecting much from this board actually surprised me, as the board included onboard USB 3.0 headers as well as 4 SATA 6 gigabit per second ports. One thing I wish that the board had more of would be DIMM slots, as RAM will be a little bit tricky when upgrading. The motherboard supports 32 gigs, but we'll be going with two sticks of 4 so you guys can kind of see the problem there. Other features that the board does not have include SLI, Crossfire, or RAID support, which that doesn't really matter because our graphics card is not SLI compatible anyway. Overall this will be a solid board for your rig despite its few lacking features as well as its micro ATX size. Moving on to the RAM, I went with two Kingston HyperX Black 4GB sticks with a speed of 2133 MHz. These are solid sticks that will go along with any color scheme in a build. Up next with the storage, I included a 1TB Caviar Blue hard drive from Western Digital. This is a very reliable hard drive that has a great price of 4.1 cents per gigabyte. I will most likely include a Western Digital hard drive in every single one of my builds because I believe they are very reliable and prominent over any other brands. Also, if you guys have any spare money left over after building this computer, I would also include buying a solid state drive to boot up Windows or any other important tasks that you may want to boot up quickly, such as games. Now for the graphics card, like I said before, we will be using the GeForce GTX 1060 by NVIDIA. This is a brand new graphics card that just released a couple of days ago and has the new Pascal architecture as well. This card is packed with 6 gigs of GDDR5 memory compared to its little brother, the GeForce GTX 960, which only has 2 gigs or 4 gigs. This card will run GTA 5 at a solid 60 frames per second 1080p gaming with very high settings. It will run Fallout 4 well over 100 frames per second with maxed out settings. And finally, it will run Crisis 3 with very high settings at 1080p at 40 to 45 frames per second. This is a very well performing card for the money, but if you wish to save yourself $50, wait for more manufactured versions of the card to pop out instead of buying the founder's card. I personally really like the look of the reference card. Moving on down to the case, I chose the NZXT Source 210 Elite for its ideal price and features. This case includes 8 hard drive bays, USB 3.0 ports, and supports ATX, Micro ATX, and Mini ITX motherboards. And is a great case from NZXT who is very well known for making PC chassis. For the final few items I went with the EVGA 600B 600W 80 plus bronze certified power supply. This will allow for upgrading in the future as this build only requires 400 watts. And finally, like I said in the beginning of the video, I would include a copy of Windows 10. So for that, I decided to try out a website that allows for inexpensive game keys as well as OS keys. Kingwin has keys for only $26.99, which is $60 less than a normal product key. So you guys can check them out in my build list in the description. And if you don't feel comfortable buying from them, you guys can buy an official copy from your local Best Buy or Micro Center. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Drop a like if you liked it. Drop a dislike if you disliked it. Subscribe if you would like more content like this. And hopefully I will have the next video up in two weeks. So stay tuned for that. And I will see you guys in the next video.